the recent inclusion of Gen 9 Pokemon, increasing the overall Pokemon count to over 1,000, Pokemon Radical Red is an absolute gauntlet of Pokemon knowledge that is an extremely fun game to play through. So far on this channel's Nuzlocke journey, we have already encountered plenty of surprises. But does Sausage and our humble team have what it takes to make it to the Pokemon League? Let's continue our journey and jump right in. Just as a brief recap of the basic Nuzlocke rules, the standard rules are in force with some extra hardcore rules, so that means fainted Pokemon will get permanently removed, I can only catch the first encounter for each name area I run into, and healing items are not allowed in battle. Pokemon Radical Red by default also applies a level cap and always using the set battle type. Jumping right back into our adventure, I meet up with one of Professor Oak's assistants who's just had a big week, okay? He's feeling a bit overworked. Even Oak's assistants need a pokey vacation to Alola sometimes. With Flash, we can finally go through the Dark Cave. Along the way, finally, our starter, Ghost Pep, is able to evolve into their last stage, which is a Fire Ghost evolution, and Gunter evolves into Obstagoon. Just as we pull up to Lavender Town, Ghost Pep has to make the ethical dilemma of taking out his own son just outside of Lavender Town at that, and now we are able to pick up some more first encounters before facing Erica at the Celadon City Gym. The first Pokemon we run into is Lombre, so I snag them up and name them Cucumber Joe. The next route we are able to find a Vullaby, so I sweep them up and name them Mandariz. This guy is a real catch. Mushroom is able to evolve into a Lowland Sand Slash, and while browsing the Celadon store, I came across this NPC who has something very important to say. Why did you have to do me dirty like that, man? I'm just trying to shop for some evolution stones. Now, with our team all lined up for the next gym battle, there's one last super important thing I have to do before entering the gym. And that's to check if the creepy old peeping man dialogue is exactly the same in this game. And excellent, it's great to see such a memorable historic character is still included and not forgotten. We breeze through all of the gym challenges. Hey, wait a second, weren't you peeking in here earlier? How did you confuse me for that old guy? I'm literally 11 years old. And now it is time to verse Erica. Erica starts off the battle with a Rillaboom and Sonic Chu is out for pursuit to utilize their super quick lightning fast speed to land some initial hits. Sonic Chu is able to dwindle down its health and next up is a Huiswanian Electrode. Now, pause. This Pokemon is a real pain. Huiswanian Electrode knows an exclusive move called Crollo Blast, which is a base 120 grass move which is a same type attack boost with its grass electric typing and 100% accuracy. This thing is an absolute beast, so I swap out to Coal Mine, who has the best chance to tank the attack. But unfortunately, this is the end of the line for Coal Mine. Huh, bars. I send out Mushroom, who just narrowly avoids the taking down the electrode in one hit and is hit by a Crollo Blast, but manages to hold on. Next up is Venusaur, who Mega Evolves, so I quickly swap to Sonic Chu, who is the MVP of this fight, and is able to wind down its HP to low before being put to sleep. Mushroom is our priority bandit over here, and lands an Ice Shard to bring down the Mega Threat. Next up is Meganium, so I sent out Gunter to set up with a parting shot, and swap to Powder to finish off the job. Last up is Meowskarada. I do an easy counter swap with Ghost Pep, but I'm quickly knocked down by a dark type move, which it also swapped its type to. Mushroom is already back to finish the job and claim our fourth gym badge. After beating Erica, we are run into another one of Oak's researchers and are given a new regional form egg. After running around the Poke Earth and back, we hatch Blitzel in the underground passage and name them Zeb. This is a unique form of Blitzel with an electric ice typing. With Erica being defeated, the level cap is raised and now we can evolve some more members of our team. And I also take the time to purchase a Pokemon from the game corner. There are a lot of really decent options here, but I'm going to have to go with Frigibax, which is one of my favourite Gen 9 Pokemon. So let's get them up to level and evolve them to their second stage, and now we're ready for our next major segment, versing Giovanni in the Team Rocket hideout. Giovanni starts the fight with Orthworm, which is a terrible matchup, so I swap out to Ghost Pep to take down the Steel Worm. I'm not sure if it's stated anywhere, but I like to think that Orthworm is distantly related to Onyx. They have very similar overall themes and designs. Ghost Pep takes the Steel Onyx down, and out comes the new Taurus form, specifically the Fire Fighting breed. This is Mandariz's time to shine and use their super smooth flying type moves, and then quickly swap out to Sonic Chu after almost dying immediately to a Stone Edge. 
Next up is Kangaskhan. Ghost Pep is sent out to inflict burn using Will-O-Wisp to reduce the overall damage and also slowly chip away at its HP. After a close call, it's now time for Five Gum to come out of their shell and lay down some serious damage on Kangaskhan. Next up, we have a Honchcrow, which is no issue for Five Gum's rock typing and rock moves. And lastly, we have Giovanni's iconic Nido King. Unfortunately, my team has taken a massive beating and they're all on lower HP here, so I'm gonna have to sacrifice Five Gum for the better good here. It looks like for one last time, he was able to simulate your senses. Arctic Bax is coming out to finish the job and just manages to hold out from Nido King's formidable strength and take down the Team Rocket leader. Now we could venture over to the Pokemon Tower for a new encounter and we run into Annihilate. This is one of my favorite cross-generation Pokemon evolutions ever made. It really gives a lot of depth to the Mankey line. I add them to my team without even skipping a beat and name them Mangry. Arctic Bax evolves into its last evolution, and now we are heading towards the Marowak mini boss. But in this game, it has been significantly ramped up, being in a lowland Marowak. I use Gunther to bait out a defense drop using Obstruct, then quickly hit it with a lick, landing Paralysis. I use Parting Shot to send out our newly acquired Mangri to take down the grieving Marowak. There's some minor rocket grunts to take down, and we're rewarded with the Pokemon flute from Mr. Fuji. Heading down from Lavender Town, we have got a new encounter, which we run into Shelda, which I named Soft Serve. I then arrived to the Snorlax, and unfortunately, I already used this Roots encounter for Shelda, but that's okay, so we can just take down the Snorlax and. Hold on a second. I can't proceed past here yet. I have to beat Sabrina first. Radical Red takes a slightly different approach to the progression in this story. We actually have to beat Silphco and Sabrina before getting to Koga. So we carefully sneak by this super alert grunt who has the amazing ability to sleep with his eyes open. Wow. And make our way through Silph Co. Towards the end, a worker gives us a Lapras for helping us save the building. Let's name them Ness and add them to our party. Just before the Giovanni fight, there's actually an additional double battle with Team Rocket admins Archer and Ariana. And also suddenly Brendan just shows up and offers to help. This guy's great. He just pops up at the perfect times. This fight isn't too difficult as Brendan does assist with his Pokemon team, which end up taking most of the hits, which is useful. And wow, look at that. The enemy team actually has a Golden Go. Golden Go is actually a very significant Pokemon as it is the 1000th Pokemon officially added to the games. I remember for the longest time, I had always thought and imagined what the 1000th entry into Pokemon could be. And let's just say, I didn't expect it to be a design like Golden Go. Personally, I thought the Frigibax line and its evolutions would have been the perfect 1000th Pokemon to be added into the games. But we all know how Nintendo is, they're full of surprises, so we get Golden Go. With the Team Rocket admins defeated, let's jump right into the second Giovanni fight. For this fight, we're going to need a very water-heavy team, so we evolve the Gyarados we brought from the Scamming Man on Route 4, and I just got to take a second to admire how amazing the Magikarp following Sprite is. Ah, oh, just beautiful. Chef's kiss. Hey, Giovanni, how's the world domination going? Haha, <laughs> yeah, it does seem like we just saw each other three minutes ago. Anyway, let's have a rematch. Giovanni sure has upped his team a lot, and this is a super challenging fight. He starts with a hip out on who summons a sandstorm with its ability. So let's set up a counter to this with Lapras using Rain Dance. Lapras makes quick work of them, but up next is Mega Kangaskhan. I set up with Gunter and then swap to Mangri to take them down. Torterra is next, so this is a job for Baxcalibur, who makes quick work of the four times weakness. Garganackle is next, who is a strong counter against most water and ground types. This is a strong choice by Giovanni. I use Cucumber Joe to continually drain down and recover health at the same time, and I'm able to take them down. Garchomp is next, who is another four times ice weakness, so I send out Gary to set up with Dragon Dance and then use Ice Fang to take him down. Excadrill is sent out next, and wow, it's not looking good. A lot of my team is really damaged here, so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to send out a Sacrificial Lamb here. And looking at my cards, I'm gonna have to go with Cucumber Joe. Next up, I send out Ness, who is able to get down all of its health, but of course, it's got a focus dash, and that's gonna mean that Lapras is gonna have to be sacrificed too, unfortunately. So unfortunately, this is a quick demise for Ness the Lapras. With its health finally down low enough, we can send out Baxcalibur to use the Ice Shard to get priority. Oh, Giovanni, Giovanni, you've done well. You've taken down two Pokemon from my team. That was a very impressive fight. 
Now we have Sabrina coming up next, and she is the first gym challenge to utilize a double battle layout. She also uses exclusively shiny Pokemon too. I like your style, Sabrina. I would do the exact same thing if I was a gym leader. The entire gimmick of Sabrina's fight is her using Hatterene to use Trick Room, which will quickly sweep your team with her slow moving and high special attack Pokemon. So our top priority is to take out that Hatterene immediately to prevent this. I use Gunter to target the Indeedee and use Baxcalibur to flinch the Hatterene and are able to take down the Hatterene on the second turn thankfully, avoiding the Trick Room setup tactic. Gunter continues to set up and I send out Ghost Pep to utilize their brand new Ghost type typing with their last evolution. Next up we have Mega Garvador which is Sabrina's ace Mega Pokemon, so we quickly prioritize taking down the Mega Evolution before anything else. Ursa Luna and Brute Bonnet are next, Ghost Pep is swapped out for Gary, and now the Ice Pokemon are in charge of finishing this fight. Porygon 2 comes out next and sets up Trick Room, but thankfully with the Ursa Luna and Brute Bonnet already taken down, this won't really help out the whole team comp a lot, so it's time to focus on the Porygon to finish the gym challenge. With the path to Fuchsia City no longer being blocked, we have now unlocked a bunch of routes and in turn first encounter Pokemon, which we can catch and build our teams. First up, we are able to get an Oricoco, which I name Oreo Choco, and a Palisand, which coincidentally is the longest time I spend on nicknaming a Pokemon. Check this out, how long does this take? This is crazy. Before I settle on the name Airbnb. Next up, we have a Dugong, which I name Dewey. Also on this read, I just wanted to point out, I do like the weather changes that they made to this. It cycles between sunny and snowy, which is a great addition to the game. And we run into Pyroar next, which I named Linus TT. Upon arriving to Fuchsia City, we run into another one of Oak's assistants with a new regional egg. I quickly hatch it and it's a unique wishy washy. Let's call them wish.com. Lastly, we run into a Vikavolt and a Galarian Muck, which I named Vikachu and Rainbow Pop, the best Paddle Pop flavor. With the new additions to our team, we have the ability to rework a lot of our team to now ensure we have a good chance against whoever we verse. But when trying to enter the gym, no body seems to be around. It would be a good idea to rematch gym leaders. Oh my god. At first, I did think the backtracking was a bit frustrating, but it does provide a lot more purpose to the earlier gyms, giving them a much stronger team, showing them some love. And this in turn makes the story a lot more engaging and fun. Especially considering you don't even need fly in this game, you could just quick travel to any of the previous gyms. To prepare for these upcoming fights, let's head to the fight club that's next to Sabrina's gym, which is now run by Chuck. Chuck has a primarily fighting type team, so it isn't too difficult for mine to take him down, and we utilize the newly acquired Wish.com and Palisand throughout the fight. The biggest threat in this fight is a Breloom. As our Sonic Chew is severely damaged, it's actually up to Mangry to take down the beast and secure the win. For our reward, we get to pick between the two new Tauros types from the Paldea region. So let's pick the water fighting Tauros and name them Hydras. At this stage, the game difficulty is ramped up to another stage with the gym leader rematches. Pokemon Radical Red now becomes a game of utilizing the absolute best matchups for each fight. If you stick with one same team, you'll find great difficulty with these fights and the rest of the game, but changing up your team and switching them accordingly to each individual fight helps a great deal. Up first we have Brock the Rock. So I'm heading into this battle with a primarily water based team. Each of these gym rematches will have either a weather effect or a terrain effect. So it is super important to try to counter those and account for them so the gym leader doesn't have the advantage. We start off Brock's fight with Great Tusk. Airbnb starts with some grass moves to lower its HP and then Tyranitar is up next. Hydros is able to make work of its 4 times fighting weakness and also take down the Sand Slash that follows up using the Aqua Jet priority move. Up next we have Brock's Mega Pokemon, Mega Aerodactyl. I swap to Mushroom who is able to take them down with its Iron Typing. Hiswanian Arcanine is next, so I use Air BNC to take it down with its 4 times ground weakness. Next up we have Omastar, which is another tricky pick with its water typing, so let's swap over to Mangry and take it down using fighting moves. And lastly, the Great Tusk is back, so let's bring out Gary to finish off this first rematch. For our next fight, let's continue in the standard linear gym order. Misty is up next, thirsty for a rematch. The rain is a massive hazard here and gives Misty a significant advantage with her water team gaining more damage. So let's quickly use Airbnb to quickly cancel out this by calling a sandstorm at the start of the fight. Misty starts with Palafin and quickly swaps to Theraphorn. 
I send out Ghost Pep, who I've specifically brought into this fight for the Therofawn, but it is quickly withdrawn as well, replaced by Gyarados. Gyarados is Misty's mega Pokemon in this fight, so let's send out Mangry to counter its dark type. Next up we face Gorbis, and honestly, this Pokemon is more of a challenge than Gyarados, as it knows Shell Smash and has a Focus Stash preventing one-hit KOs. If the Gorbis is able to set up using Shell Smash, it becomes a speedy sweeping machine. So I use Sonic Chew to U-turn me back to send out Zeb, who knows Freeze Dry, which will be incredibly useful in this scenario. Unfortunately, Misty is back to her old switching habits and quickly sends out Therofawn, which I answer to by sending out Ghost Pep with its four times fire weakness. Next up is Palafin, so Hydros is the man here for the job to take it down with his fighting moves. Gorbis is sent back out, so let's bring out Zeb to quickly stop its Shell Smash setup. Kingdra is next, and we could utilize Zeb's Freeze Dry again and squeeze out another KO. And lucky last, Misty has been keeping her Seismitoad in her reserves, of course, as Zeb is actually able to hit a four times super effective on it, with Freeze Dry doing super effective damage to Water type alongside the ground. For the last match, we have Lieutenant Surge himself. I also noticed I forgot to name out Baxcalibur. How could I do that? I named them Freezilla. This is a reference to them being a freezing Godzilla, not some random free Godzilla protest campaign. Lieutenant Surge starts with Iron Treads and sets up Stealth Rocks. So I use this opportunity to use Power Up Punch with Mangri to start setting up its attack boosts. Iron Tread retreats and brings out Pormont, which I answer to with more Power Up Punches. Iron Hands is next, who is a massive heavy hitter, but with Mangri already having its attack raised by three levels, I can use Drain Punch to restore some HP and take down its weapon. Next up is Manectric, who is Surge's mega evolution. So let's bring out Air B and C to cancel out any electric moves and punish it with ground attacks. Next up we have Water Rotom Washing Machine. So I bring out Freezilla to set up with a Dragon Dance. Surge sneaks out another sneaky swap and Freezilla starts to unleash his attack boosted moves, which is actually able to take down the remainder of his team. Well, that was quite the journey. With those three rematches sorted, we're now able to finally challenge Koga. He has finally returned from his secret ninja activities and his gym is reopened. The battle starts with Powder versing a Swellow, but he is quick to swap to a Drapion. Drapion does massive damage and I am forced to swap out to Air B and C. Koga being the ninja he is constantly shuffles his Pokemon around to stay in his toes. Excelgore comes out and I send in Ghost Pep to bring him down a notch. I utilize Ghost Pep's Torch Song to raise its special attack and next up is Iron Valiant, which Ghost Pep is also able to swiftly deal with due to its hyping. Greninja is out next which is a great counter so I have to swap to Mangry to utilize Drain Punch again. Out comes Toxicitry, which is Koga's Dynamax gimmick Pokemon, so I swap to Air B and C to expose its four times ground weakness. Drapion comes back out of hiding and is ready to fight, so I bring out Freezilla to use Priority Ice Shard on it and the original Swellow, resulting in Young Sausage here getting his sixth gym badge. Let's go to our new encounter in the Safari Zone, which is absolutely full of so many unique Pokemon, and Surf. But of course, there is an encounter with Brendan. Why wouldn't there be? You were fighting by my side the last time, Brendan. Think of the good times we had together in Silphco, where I sacrificed almost half of your team entirely and none of my Pokemon died. So, the good times. Brendan starts with a Metagross for his Gen 3 themed team, so I send out Hydros to take it down. Up next is Medicham, so I quickly bring in Sonic Chew to deal with the problem, but it is already quickly swapped out to Crawdrawn. This is a good matchup for Sonic Chu, who lands a KO with U-Turn, leaving me with a selection of sending out a Pokemon of my choice. So let's just go with Air B and C to be safe. He can recover his HP. Sceptile is out next, who is actually Brendan's mega Pokemon. So Air B and C is in and out of there faster than a rising tide destroying a sandcastle. I'll bring out Freezilla to deal with the grass dragon. Metacham is back out of hiding, so I use my Mangri to counter their move, but Gardevoir is quickly subbed in. This isn't Mangri's first rodeo with psychic Pokemon, and he makes a quick work of Gardevoir using his ghost moveset. Next up we have Exploud, who is a great pick for Mangri who can recover their health and also hit super effective moves. With Exploud taken care of, lastly we can take care of that elusive Metacham. Give me a little bit more notice next time, Brendan, would you? Thanks for being a sport, as always. Um, thanks man. I'm not a good sport, in your opinion. Just a regular old sport. What sport am I? <laughs> okay, he can walk through walls now.
Well, anyways, let's head into the Safari Zone and get our first encounter, which is Bishop. I'll name them Katana. With Surf acquired, let's head to Pallet Town and make our way to Cinnabar Island, grabbing a new encounter on the way, which is Whoop, the Paladin Whooper. As we make our way to the old mansion, we are ambushed by May, who is apparently just also in the region at the same time as Brendan, just to make Sausage's journey that much more difficult. Jeez, May, you please leave me alone? She starts off with Soul Rock, which sets up Stealth Rocks, so I use this opportunity to set up Freezilla with two Dragon Dancers. It's actually going for an explosion here, which I did not expect at all, and thankfully Freezilla tanks and is able to deliver a beating to the next Breloom that is sent out. Freezilla is an absolute monster already, but with two attack level boosts and the Expert Belt that it is holding as its item, they are actually able to sweep the remainder of May's team which is a first feat by someone in this run through. Great job. So let's lastly have a peek inside the mansion and get our encounter, which is a regular Ninetales that I named Flare. At this point, this is a good stopping stage for the second part of this series. From here on, there's only two badges left, Victory Road and the Elite Four, until we are able to become champion. So there'll be one last final part coming out soon, which will essentially be a gauntlet of battles from the last two gyms all the way to the Elite Four. Radical Red has been such a delight to play through and I've had a whole heap of fun making this series. The Gen 9 Pokemon are incorporated so well into an already fantastic Fire Red game that it makes for a truly memorable experience. I'm super excited for the last stretch of this game and reviewing the overall experience. And of course for more upcoming future Pokemon videos that I have planned in the current video pipeline. So once again thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to let me know in the comments below and by liking the video. Have you played Pokemon Radical Red? If so, what did you think about the game? Be sure to let me know. As always, have a great one and I'll catch you in the next one.